Hi guys, my name is Sarah. What would you choose? To be a slave in your own parents' house or to be free but homeless? My situation has forced me to pick the second option. I grew up in a very tough environment. My dad used to be a successful and respectable realtor. When my mother was alive, they had serious issues. He restricted her freedom in every aspect. He forbid her to work, hang out with friends, or talk to other men. He treated her like Cinderella. Mom had to keep the house tidy and comfortable and prepare meals. She never protested against it. I think he just broke her will. She used to be the perfect housewife, but he still vented his anger at her almost every day. At the same time, when they went out together, he'd act like a decent family man and gentleman. Everybody considered us as a beautiful, perfect family. I am their only daughter. When they argued, he always threatened my mom, saying he would put her in a psychiatric hospital and that she would never see me again. I learned to sing and play guitar at a very young age because music helped me to forget about my father and hide from reality. Everybody told me I had a talent. Unfortunately, mom couldn't stand this stress and pressure and she was diagnosed with cancer and died when I was 16. I was very depressed and had no one around to share my sorrow with. After her death, dad got even worse. He was just unbearable. When he arrived home from work, he would yell at me because the house wasn't perfectly clean or because his dinner was not served in the right manner or because my makeup was too bright. The smallest detail could piss him off and he was completely unpredictable. I felt like he enjoyed the fact that I was weak and like he was trying to make another Cinderella out of me. I was afraid to complain to my friends or to social services because he had connections and everybody believed in his good guy reputation. If I tried to expose him, I could end up in a psychiatric hospital, that's for sure. He also drank way too much alcohol. And when he did, I had to just leave the house, go to the park, and sing under my favorite tree. By that time, I had started to compose my own songs. My father, of course, considered my music to be a stupid hobby and refused to discuss the possibility of sending me to a performing arts school. He told me that I had to do what he commanded me to do since I lived under his roof. I was miserable and stressed out. And then one day, there was a turning point. He returned from work early and heard me singing in my room. He came upstairs, screamed at me at my stupid songs were causing his migraine. He ripped my music notes from my lap and pulled my guitar out of my hands. He took it away and locked it in his office. He said he would give it back one day when I behaved well and made him happy. And then he told me to go clean the entire house. That evening, I decided to not argue with him. It was pointless. I realized that he would never change. But for me, this was the last straw. When he took my guitar, I just knew that it was time to leave him for good. He had taken everything that my mother had given to me, but I managed to save some money for my escape. At night, I packed my backpack, snuck into his office, and took back my guitar. I left a farewell note that said, We will be better apart, and left. At the bus station, I bought a random ticket to another city. My adulthood had begun. When I imagined this day, I thought that I would be scared but I actually felt some kind of relief. It was hard for me to start again in a new town. I ran out of money really fast and couldn't find a place to stay. Nobody wanted to hire me. I had to squat secretly in an unfinished building. At night, I covered myself with newspapers to sleep. And during the day, I performed my songs on the streets. People would throw money in my hat and I'd spend those earnings on food. One day, I was singing a very sad song about my family issues. I dedicated it to my mom when I wrote it. And suddenly, I started crying while I was singing. A very sweet elderly couple, Timothy and April, were watching me from the side. They were very touched by my song. They dropped some cash into my hat and said they really liked my song and my voice. We chatted for a little bit, and then they asked how it happened that I had ended up on the streets. I said it was a long story, and they asked me if I wanted to have dinner together. 
They seemed pretty innocent, and I agreed. They took me to a restaurant, and for the first time in the three months of my homeless life, I ate well. Tim and April looked at me with compassion. I had never been surrounded by such unconditional love and care, so I told them my story, with all the sad and ugly details from my childhood. When April heard about my father's behavior, she got angry and emotional. She started crying and left for the bathroom to try to get herself together. Tim told me that they had lost their daughter when she was 12. After her death, April can't stand to hear about parents who don't appreciate their children. I felt compassion for this couple and had this feeling that I had known these people for a very long time. When we finished our meal, they asked whether I had a place to sleep, and I said that I was sleeping in a box, which was true. They looked at each other meaningfully and invited me to stay in their home. The opportunity of taking a shower and sleeping in a fresh, clean bed was very tempting, so I said yes. So they took me to their place, and it looked much more luxurious than I expected. Tim and April prepared a room for me, and it was beautiful. I didn't trust them 100% at that point, but I had nothing to lose anyway. I spent the next couple of weeks at their house. We got to know each other better, and I felt like I had found my true family. They didn't treat me like Cinderella. They treated me like a daughter. I enjoyed their swimming pool, healthy food, and I could play my songs anywhere I wanted. Sometimes April was even too caring with me, but I liked that. She bought me a new hand-painted guitar. One morning, we were having breakfast together. Tim and April showed me an advertisement for a talent contest and said I should participate with one of my songs. I was very excited, and I agreed. It was just a small local contest, nothing serious or glamorous. But for me, it was a huge step, because I had never performed on a stage before. On the day of the contest, I was very nervous. Tim and April took me to the location in their car. Before entering the building, they stopped me and said that no matter what happened, I was a star. It was so sweet. I was very inspired by their support, and it showed in my performance. When everyone applauded after my performance, I suddenly saw Miss Davison in the crowd, my father's colleague. She said she was visiting her relatives and they took her to this contest to support her little nephew. She was surprised to see me and I asked her not to tell my dad about it. Miss Davison was very surprised and suspicious. Apparently, my father hadn't told her about my escape or maybe anyone. And then we lost each other in the crowd. And by the way, I got second place and was very proud of myself. After the contest, Tim and April asked me if they could become my new parents. We decided not to waste time on custody documents because my 18th birthday was coming up. And besides, my father would never have agreed to that. I was very glad and grateful. And as soon as I thought that the worst of my days were over, my father showed up. I think he traced their address from Miss Davison's relatives. Tim allowed him to come in and explain why he was there. My father began accusing them of kidnapping his daughter. He screamed that he would never let this happen, that he would go to the police. In reality, what he really wanted was money. Tim and April were far wealthier than my father. Me and my destiny were not important to him. He just wanted self-affirmation and money. April was shocked. She brought some tea, asked him to sit down and to calm down. She tried to awaken his empathy. She told him that his daughter was sleeping in a box when they found her, but it did not soften him at all. It made him even more angry, and he hinted that they were creepy perverts who pick up homeless children for whatever reasons. All this time, I was hiding behind the door. I began secretly filming this fight on my phone's camera, including his blackmailing of Tim and April. When he finished his threats, I came into the room. He looked a little confused. I showed him my phone and offered him a choice. Either he disappears from my life forever, or I'm going to send this video to all of his friends, his colleagues, and his clients. He tried to approach me to take away my phone, but Tim blocked his way. My father had lost, and he finally realized that. He pushed Tim away, knocked all teacups off the table, and left the room, slamming the door instead of saying goodbye. So my father disappeared, and I haven't heard anything from him since. I turned 18 and got into a college for music to develop my skills. 
There was no need to take an education loan because I received a grant and the rest of the sum was covered by Tim and April in cash. They had already had a savings for their daughter's education and they hadn't touched the money for years because it was too painful. They told me that my future was the first respectful reason they had found to spend the money. Now I have learned to play new musical instruments and my teachers helped me to improve my voice. I met new friends and we formed a band. So far, we only rehearse in my garage, but we have ambitious plans. As for that recording, I still have this video, just in case. But I don't think I'm going to see my father again. And I don't miss him at all. I have a feeling that I was born into the wrong family.